What up? It's O Double R I R N. That's Orion Online. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we're here for another round of Homeboy Talk. Talk that talk. This is your boy Petey, aka King Arthur. You can find me on YouTube at King Arthur Plays. This is the pro wrestling extraordinaire, Brian Simmons. You can catch me on All Star Southern on Instagram. Yo, what's going on, everyone? My name's Deion Donovan. You can catch me at Tyler Page Comics on Instagram and Facebook. This your boy, Daniel Stinnett, a.k.a. Hybrid Rainbow on Resetter Forums. You can catch me on Instagram at Black underscore Lawns. All right, so homeboys, there's a topic we need to talk about now. It's that time of the year. Game of the year. Game oh, Awards. Shit. Here we go. Game here we Awards go. is here. So, it's a weird year because 2020 has been, you know, 2020. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I'm on the Game Awards site, and we have the Game of the Year. Game of the Year nomination nominees are Doom Eternal. Final Fantasy VII Remake, mm -hmm. Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and The Last of Us Part Two. Ooh. Ooh. Well, you better stop. And I believe <laughs> that Animal Crossing might do it. I'm, I'm not... For, for real? Yes, for real. I think Animal Crossing is going to do it because it's a game that people had during quarantine. It capitalized. It had more sales than many of the Nintendo games combined right now. And a lot of people were looking for Switches because of Animal Crossing. But then you gotta look at it like this: Did Animal Crossing do anything that hasn't been done in an Animal Crossing before? That is true, except for the whole I mean, online with the people and not online and people. I mean, I mean, to not to give it a, a bad rep or anything like that. It was good because they started adding terraforming, and now you could actually start putting furniture exactly where you wanted. Yeah. And start messing with your island a little bit more than you have in the past. I I just don't feel like Animal Crossing is one of those games that you could look at compared to. Last of Us Part Two, Ghost True. of Tsushima, Hades, Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy, yeah, and be it. like, that game was better than the rest of them because I just really like no, it's Animal Crossing. Uh, well, go ahead, man. I I think with Animal Crossing, it's more of a casual game. Yes. You uh you pick it up, play it for a couple hours, put it down. But like some like for my pick would be Ghost of Tsushima. Okay. You okay. got beautiful landscape. Mm. You got an amazing sound score. True. You've got uh you've got things that you can just like. Do you can get immersed in that, mm -hmm. but Animal Crossing, I I, I don't want to crap on it. It's just it's like saying Pokemon is going to be the game of the year. That's fair. You know That's what I'm fair. saying? Yeah. I I I don't know. If, I don't want to sound mean about it. Well, here's the thing: what constitutes game of the year? Is it specs? Is it reviews? Or is it actual what meant to people? Because to a lot of people, like PD said, King Arthur said, Animal Crossing what did help them cope through quarantine and and being by themselves and making, visiting people's homes and shit like that. So to a certain demographic, Game of the Year was like, I remember 2020, I remember being locked down. I played the hell out of Animal Crossing more so than these other games. I mean, what do you think That's about fair. that? Is it, is it specs or is it mostly what meant to people for this kind of year? Looking back. So 2021, looking back. So, you know? so basically when you look at Game of the Year, right, Game of the Year is one is that category that when you have these six or five or how many games that you have, that that game has to have not only nailed it gameplay wise, story wise, uh, graphically. It's pretty much like when you look at this game, does this game embody the whole entire aspect of everything that makes it a video game, and is that so much better than everything else? It's almost like the same thing as like the Oscars. When you look at an Oscar winner for, you know, best picture of the year, does that movie, is everything about that movie make it that much better than all the other movies that it's going against? Right. So when you start breaking it down like that, that's when you start, that's when the reviewers who are on this panel are going to start going back and be like, okay, well, this had good gameplay, but the story was weak. That had good characters, but the gameplay wasn't too good. So it's like, you have to find that one game that when you come, when everybody comes and sits down at the table, they're like... This was the game that, on all the things that we got to check off on this checklist, it hit every every point. Right. And so that's when the discussion is going to get a little heated because while we're talking about Animal Crossing, yeah, it brought people together during a time of quarantine and a pandemic, and people were people were sitting there having weddings and birthdays. Uh, Gary Witta is running a talk show through it, late night talk show through it, which is kind of cool. I have but, no idea about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, people, people are doing some pretty creative stuff with Animal Crossing. At the same time, though, right after we got done with Animal Crossing, right, 
what was the very next game everybody jumped on to after that? It was Fall Guys. Fall yeah. Guys. Fall, Fall Guys, Guys. Was, was that game of the summer. And you really didn't hear too many people talking about Animal Crossing. You know, people still playing it until to, to this day. Today, but, yeah. but you really didn't hear that many people talking about so it. Are you gonna, so you're saying it's kind of like a trend? Yeah. It, yes. was, it, was, it was a very trendy, very fad type game. Because after Animal Crossing was Fall Guys, and after Fall Guys, and Among, Among Us. Among Us. Yep. Then after Among Us, you had Genshin Impact that kind of slid in there too. Mm-hmm. And so it's like when you have all these games one after another, yeah, unless you were playing Animal Crossing like the entire time all the way through, right. you really don't hear people talking about Animal right. Crossing so, mm-hmm. so, you know, what, what, what do you think, Ron? You know what? Animal Crossing did numbers, record numbers for the Nintendo. Mm. Uh, sold Switches. It did. All right, yes. so where was the Switches at this whole year. <laughs> they were sold out. Like, the, the Animal Crossing sold out a lot of Switches. Like, you go to the store, you can't find a Switch. During quarantine, can't find Switches. I mean, and you couldn't find anything during quarantine. You couldn't find a PlayStation and, controller during and, quarantine. And, yeah, and, you couldn't. Damn dumbbell. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have a bell, but you found Tom Nook. <laughs> All right, so, so, how Animal Crossing was out there, and how it's, it's delegated where you just can't share that game. Uh, if you want your own fucking island, oh, true. you can't you share have, that game. So story. it's yeah. selling that game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's because the Nintendo fan base is fucking strong. Who's oh, going to yeah. vote that shit? I mean, you got to look at it like this. The vote is going to come down to this. 90% of the vote goes to the actual Game Awards panel. 10% goes to the user. Mm-hmm. So even if, say, a horde of Nintendo fanboys just came out of nowhere and just ended up just stacking the deck and kept voting Animal Crossing. Well, at the end of the day, the panel's going to have the, the say at the end of it. And if they don't like Animal Crossing, it doesn't matter how many fanboys come out and vote for their game. It's whatever. It just gives us a chance to kind of voice our opinion about what we think was game of the year or go from there. Mm-hmm. I mean, then plus you also got to look at, look at the other games that are on that list too. You got, yes. you got Doom Eternal. Uh, great, great first-person shooter. Great gameplay if you, if you like you know, kind of arena style gunplay, stuff like that. Soundtrack, if you're into the heavy metal stuff that kind of reminds you of the original Doom and stuff like that, it was good. Um, story was a little bit weaker than I expected, um, especially coming from the first game. They kind of try to expand upon the first game story and go into a little bit deeper in the lore of the Doom Slayer in the second game. And really, it just kind of felt a little bit flat. And it felt just more of like a... Uh, a justification for them going to all these different locations and different things like that. So, g- good game. If there was a first person shooter of the year award, I'd definitely give Doom yeah, Eternal to it. Sure. But I, I don't think I would pick that one personally for game of the year. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Well, does a does a underground indie darling like Haiti stand an actual chance against any of these? From what I've seen, the art design look of it looks yes, great. Yes, yes, but it's gonna take the. It's gonna take a, the reviewers to basically come in and be like, yeah. "Hades is gonna is, mm-hmm. has to be this," just because indies normally don't really get that kind of shine. So the fact that we have an indie even in the game of the year is actually award, impressive. It's actually impressive for what, it, for what it's done. Yeah. But then at the same time, you're basically an indie versus the full power might of yeah. AAA titles from Naughty Dog, sure. you know, Square Enix, and all of them. Yeah. So you you obviously don't have the budget to be able to go against these guys, to do some stuff that they're doing. So then your gameplay, your story, your characters, everything else better be on point for it to get to that point. Does it have a chance? I mean, it made it to the nomination. It, yeah. it, it has one it has one sixth of a chance to win, right? Yes. Yeah, right? So does it have a chance? Yes. Do I personally feel like it's going to win? No. Because I feel, because you, you got to think, the award that they normally give right before a game of the year is best game design. Now, when you have best game design, best game design has always kind of always been like the runner up to game of the year. The award, the, the game that reviewers feel is just as good as the game of the year, but we're not going to give it the game of the year. They usually give it to best game design. Right, second runner up. Se- second runner up. Yeah. So when you look at all the different games, gameplay wise, which game had the most unique gameplay out of all of them that for this year? Okay. Well, it would have to right. hate it because it has like that kind of style. Like if you play. Uh, Bastion and Transistor I mean, from game you know game. before they took that gameplay they ramped it up to eleven to go from there. So I feel like out of all the games that have come out, we there's nothing none, none of the games that there are in game of the year have anything unique that we haven't seen before gameplay wise. Right. It's all been the same except maybe Hades. Hades is the one that's kind of newer, pushing the envelope pushing a little bit. Right. So I mean it, and, it has a chance. And really that's the that's like the ability of an indie. Um, developer, they can 
go into areas that a triple A game normally would. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I don't. I think, like you said, Hades has a one in six chance. Mm -hmm. But I, I really think that they're going up against too strong of a lineup. Um, if I, I, I'm going to say that my second pick, I don't like it. But Last of Us Two the elephant would probably be mm -hmm. the second one. If Ghost of Tsushima doesn't win, okay, I I say those two games have made a lasting impact on gaming this year. Yes. So, but Hades, I I just heard about I, the game. I just heard the game like literally when we when they announced the nominees. Right. That's the first time I heard of Hades. Same I've, here. I've seen reviews. Yeah. Yeah. But. I mean, it it just came out on because it was it was been it's been on PC for like almost two years now in early access. And it finally just released on Switch and whatever else like that. So if you guys ever get a chance, I, I believe it's actually, it may be on sale, I'm not, I'm not sure. But if you, if you do get a chance and you want a good kind of like indie roguelike game to go ahead and play, mm -hmm. I definitely suggest playing it. Like, it's, it, don't get me wrong, it's a good game. I just don't feel that it's going to have enough power behind it to kind of get it over the hump versus some of the other games, especially mm -hmm. when you start going against Ghost of Tsushima, Final gotcha. Fantasy VII Remake, yeah. and them. Me personally, my pick, and just like just like you said, the guys, the elephant in the room. My pick is The Last of Us Part Two for Game of the Year, and the re reason why I I picked that is because my other choice would have been Ghost of Tsushima, and term because just like you know, just like Brandon was saying, you know, you got in terms of graphics, story, characters, gameplay, everything, everything. Ghost of Tsushima is a great game. The only knock against it though is because. In, in a world of Ubisoft open world games, it's kind of hard to avoid like that paint by the numbers Ubisoft style, you know, excuse me, Ubisoft style of games where, okay, you see a marker, you go to the marker, you do the mission, okay, you see another marker, you go to the marker, you do another mission, and it does get a little repetitive towards halfway That's through true. the game, mm -hmm. but the game pretty much rides off of how strong the gameplay is and how good the story and the characters are to continue it even if you're, you're kind of getting a little burnt out by doing the same missions and sneaking around as the ghost and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But to bring that back to the, the Last of Us Part Two, is I would have totally put 100% put my weight behind Ghost of Tsushima if it didn't come out a month after The Last of Us Part Two, uh, Because Last of yeah. Us Part Two came out and then literally like a month later Ghost of Tsushima, Ghost of Tsushima came, came out. out. Yeah. So as good as Ghost of Tsushima was, the Last of Us Part Two is on a different level. I mean, story-wise, graphics-wise, like there, like there's no really any studios out here that are touching Naughty Dog when it comes to your games graphically, yeah. except maybe Rockstar. And even then, you had to play Red Dead Redemption Two on like the Xbox One X just to even get close. Right. Uh, uh, I mean, per performances from the actual actors, the actual actresses. I mean. Freaking two people from The Last of Us Part Two are nominated for Best Performance. Yeah. And it's, it's, there's only like five people in the whole entire category. Mm -hmm. Two of them are from Last of Us Part Two. Uh, yeah. That tells you something. You got, you got that. Yeah. You, you got you, you got the, the whole gameplay cinematic third person shooter style. I mean, studios what? have been copying Naughty Dog for years trying to do it. Can't nobody get it right. Right, right. So when you combine all that together, it's really, I really feel like that game is going to run away with it, not just in Game of the Year, but it's going to sweep a whole bunch of other awards that it's been nominated for. And then plus with Cyberpunk not even uh, getting on the list from being I, I delayed, think, to me personally, that just opened the door for I think with yeah. Cyberpunk, I think that's going to end up being like a 2021 thing because it came out so late, kind of like Smash. Smash came out in December in 2018. Yeah, and it ended up being, the it, it passed the timeline of the Game Awards. So that Smash ended up being best signing game in 2019 because it came out so late. Yeah. And speaking of coming out, you know, Things like that. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah. I think the nostalgia train is going to run that up because from you know all of us, we all played Final Fantasy VII to the most point. Right. Yeah. We all played the original game. Right. We all saw the movies, played the sequels, played the prequels, all the whole nine yards. Final Fantasy VII is a big Square Enix title. It is probably the biggest Square Enix title besides Final Fantasy VI and probably Kingdom Hearts. But Final Fantasy VII, once you play it, you're like, okay, you get the feel of playing back in '97. Right. One of the greatest games of all time. One of the greatest RPGs of all time. And then you bring a remake of that game to, you know, before the quarantine. So some people had time to play it and realize the graphics are different. The facial ex the features are different. Brand new engine. Storyline. The storyline might be the one that kind of kills it because it's the same storyline but with a twist. So 
if you've if you've got any of y'all played Final Fantasy VII Remake, you have the same storyline. It's the Midgar part. Yeah. So doing all that, you're like, all right, Midgar. But then you see certain twists and certain things change, different parts of characters. And then when you get to the end of the game, you get to the end of the game what? When you get to the end of the game, like near the end of the game, you realize you're not playing the same game. So your whole thought process with Seven is different. Mm -hmm. And so fans might, you know, and it put fans literally in an impasse. Some fans liked it, some fans hated it, and it made you think. And I know Game of the Year like, gives you that thing where like, you sit down and you're like, was this good or like, was it bad? Right. So, well, well, but then the, the, the question then goes is, when you look at it with the other reviewers and whatnot, is the change in gameplay from the original Final Fantasy VII to the remake, was it big enough to where that may have possibly turned off some other reviewers? It, yeah, because it now it's gone. I mean, for those you know, for those of you guys out there who, who have played it, you know that the game is more of a faster-paced kind of active time battle. So it's not exactly full ARPG like say like Kingdom Hearts, but it's definitely a lot faster paced and a lot more actually than you know kind of kind of more like kind of like I guess like Final Fantasy 15. Yeah, I call it Devil May Cry Final Fantasy. Really? <laughs> so, so you know, I, I, I feel like a lot of there were, I, you know, when I was looking at reviews and hearing from uh, people online who were reviewing it, a lot of people complained about that and said that that really kind of took away from the game a little bit mm -hmm. because they were expecting old school, you know, pick old attack. school picks. Okay, the, the, the you know what I mean? The talk train kicked them in the ass. That's you know, what happened. You know, turn based. So, uh, I mean, good game. It'll probably end up winning best RPG. It will. Uh, it, should, it should. But I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about well, it. Yeah. 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 Well, here's the thing. It's rare to find a game that has like over 20 years of hype and anticipation actually for the most part succeeding right can mm -hmm. we all agree everyone loved the game can we agree that you know it, it got commercially praised critically praised as mm -hmm. well like everyone was satisfied with with the final fantasy 7 remake yeah. in comparison to like the sequel of kingdom hearts 3 you know what i'm saying yeah so with that i think there there is some strength to that where it was a game that developed that actually delivered after 20 plus years mm -hmm. of anticipation so i think it has that going for it yes yeah for the most part well, I mean, you know, when you when you look overall at all these different titles and everything, um, you know, you want to know who is going to be the winner out of all this, de depending on who you look at. PlayStation. Exactly. PlayStation. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be PlayStation. PlayStation. Because, because, so I, because, because either way, you, you look at it, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about basically almost just about three, three exclusives uh -huh. versus... Uh, uh, you know some some other stuff, but three of those games in the game of the year are exclusive only on PlayStation, PlayStation, and PlayStation and platforms. PlayStation. So PlayStation is gonna, you know, Sony's gonna sit back and they're gonna be like, well, we don't care what you pick. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Either way, we gonna get we gonna get recognition and we're gonna get PR behind it because it's from our games. And I just feel like you know it's it, it definitely lets you know that at the end of the, of the generation that Sony definitely put a lot of thought into putting out these games because nobody was expecting to get this level of games in the very last year of the generation right before about to go into PlayStation 5, X, you know, Series X and all that stuff like that. Uh -huh. So, you know, when you look overall at it, uh, I believe PlayStation alone is nominated for like over 22 awards overall, mm -hmm. while the next closest, you're, you're, you're talking about Maybe Xbox, I think, had eight nominations, but even then, that was because they just bought Bethesda, so that's where that came from. And you know, I mean, it's you know, it's, it's, it's I mean, what can you what can you really do? Yeah, you know I mean, what your what, what can you really do at that point? Yeah, well, here's let's go back to Elf in the Room, Last of Us Two. Mm. We got a game that's critically praised, but kind of. Not kind of hated by a fan base. Now controversial. Now was it see now was it hated by the fan base or was it hated by alt right groups out there uh -huh. who mm. was hating on the fact that one you have an openly you know openly gay, gay character transgender character in the game and just didn't do what they wanted it to do. Now I I, I know it's a trend to follow those lines right mm -hmm. and try to get reviews and yeah. try to get views on get that get that certain fan right, base right right you get the, side, the, yeah. The, yeah you get that kind of fan base too cheer you on, whatever. Mm -hmm. How much of it that was actually true? I've heard more negativity about that game. I heard Laura Bailey got pretty much like, Laura Bailey, one of the actors who actually got nominated for best voice, you know, best voice character. Uh -huh. She got bashed on Twitter, bashed online yeah. for the character that she played. Mm -hmm. And 
Death threats was sent. Death threats, yeah. Death threats yeah. 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 was, was sent to the the character actress for Abby in the game, you know, and you know, if you look, if you, if you see her Instagram or her Twitter or anything like that, like she literally looks exactly like her character. Like, uh -huh. they, like Naughty Dog did an amazing job with the facial uh, yeah. capture and everything. Yeah. But even so, she was getting death threats from people talking about this and that, we're gonna kill you and this and that. And it's like, it's a video game. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, not that, it's not that serious. It's not that serious, man. Some it's people, not that serious Some people, some people game is life. Like, yeah. game, no, it's not even that, like, the ball is life. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think the funny thing is, the political stance these guys are making might actually help push the game to get the game of the year, you know, trophy. Well, well I mean, I mean what that's what that's what everybody that's what everybody's saying uh -huh. because, like, it's politically correct to do so. Well, well yeah, because like to, to go back to the to the, the Oscars analogy I used earlier, uh -huh. when you look at movies that end up winning uh, Best Picture, right? Mm -hmm. It's like these movies that people out there who feel that like uh, Hollywood is pushing an agenda or they're, or they're trying to get a certain viewpoint across and because of that it's I guess a lot more socially liberal to accept those type of viewpoints and be more uh, be more rewarding of them so a lot of people came out for Last of Us Part 2 and they were like okay well Naughty Dog is just sitting there pushing a, a homosexual agenda they're just pushing this agenda you know trying to be more liberal more liberal and it's like it has nothing to do with being liberal or pushing an agenda. It's like, this is the story that Neil Druckmann and his team wanted to do. They managed to get it across. Granted, for those of you who play the game, you know story-wise, within like the first couple hours of the game, the game hits you with a twist that nobody saw coming. And because of that twist, that threw so many people off that people started hating it from that point. But I think the beauty of the game that I appreciate is the fact that not everything that we do in this life is going to be completely black and white. Ooh. We are always going to be in several shades of gray. There's always going to be nuance. There's always going to be complexity to our choices and things that we do as human beings. Talk yeah. that so, up, man. so when you go ahead and you have a game that pretty much hits you over the head with that and uh -huh. says, hey, this is not going to be a straight black versus white, good versus evil type game. You now have to take a look and say, without spoiling the game, because for those, I guess people still haven't played it, but for those of you out there, pretty much the game, by the end of the game, it pretty much makes you look at it and says, are your heroes really your heroes at the end, and can you justify their actions 100% with mm. everything that they do? Yeah. So when you have that kind of complexity and nuance in a story, I thought it was absolutely amazing, and I feel like they're going to get rewarded for that by winning game of the year. Yeah. The only problem is you have a lot of people who don't like complexity, People don't like black, don't like shades of gray. They like black and white, good versus evil. I want it to go exactly this way, and if I don't get that, then it's trash. And I, if if Last of Us Two were Last of Us One, then we could be talking about something completely different. Mm. It would probably not have the controversy, except for the Abby thing. That's always going to be the, that's always going to be there. Yeah, but I think that. They introduced it in a time where they were expecting something else, and they took one of the characters away, and in, and then put another one in that place. Yeah, you put a re you put you uh, come out with the game. Game's a hit. Part one is a hit. The then they remaster it, so they're re-solidifying your connection to the two people that are in that game. True. Mm -hmm. Then they take that next per one of the people away. That's a part of the controversy, and I think, I think that the people that are going to be voting, I'm talking about the fan vote, are, is going to turn away from that because yeah. of the controversy. Oh, oh of course. Oh, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can you tell you the, the fan <laughs> vote is... Oh, no, I'm sorry. You, can say, you, you, can, you said something about the Oscars, and yeah. I'm thinking, like, I, I, I'm trying to not be biased with Ghost of Tsushima, <laughs> but look at um, what they did with Parasite. A Chinese director uh, won an Oscar. Uh, uh, was, was, was it China or Korean? Korean. Yeah. Korean. Uh, Korean. 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 My bad. Korean. My, my bad. Korean. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> the, um, it was a Korean movie that came in America and, and, and just won. Mm. So I'm thinking, I'm looking at the international appeal. Mm. Because this is, um, Ghost of Tsushima is like one of the only games that Japanese people came over and congratulated about. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's true. Oh, no, oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 it's, it's, it's true. The, the, the Japanese, a lot of Japanese developers came out and they were like, you know what, 
thank you for making this game. Thank you for being uh, grounded and for not making it super crazy and for actually doing the research about our time history period and go from there. The only, the only issue that some people had though is, see, the Western Hemisphere looks at samurai as like these badass dudes that were just going around dispensing justice and yeah. being super cool and everything else like that. In reality, the samurai were hated, are hated by the Japanese because the, the, the samurai were almost like, almost kind of like the police are today and in today's society. They were, they were going around killing people for just looking at them wrong and they were, they were corrupt and there was a lot going on in that time period so that when you talk about the samurai to the Japanese today and try to, tell, try to make them look like they're cooler than what they actually were, you actually get some upset Japanese people because they're like, no, no, you don't understand. The samurai aren't to, supposed to be celebrated. They're, they were hated. They're hated in Japanese culture. But when you have a game that's as good as Ghost of Tsushima yeah. that kind of makes you play as a character who has to... Uh, his sense of duty to his code of being a samurai and love of his land and having to protect it from the Mongol invasion, then I guess that was where the Japanese were kind of like, okay, now we can see what, what you guys were doing. I, I guarantee you, if that was like a straight up samurai game and trying to espouse how cool the samurai were and how great they were and everything, I guarantee you the Japanese would have hated it. But because it yeah. juxtap juxtaposition, you know, you play as the ghost, as the ninja, the mm -hmm. dishonorable ninja, okay. as, as opposed to the samurai, then I guess that's where the Japanese like to live. Uh, I just want to go off of uh, what you guys just spoke on because uh, The Last of Us has impacted the North American North American crowds. Yeah. yeah. Ghost of Tsushima has impacted North American and Japanese. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure worldwide as yeah. well. Yeah. You know. So I um, mean, with it being a new title and The Last of Us has already been a recognized title, mm -hmm. Animal Crossing is a worldwide known title. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, my thing is, it's a, uh, it's. It's a toss-up. I feel like I feel like that Animal Crossing and uh, Ghost of Tsushima is a tie on my on my end. What I feel like it's going to be, you know, because of the fact that it is, is because it's these are two titles that's also respected so far. But Ghost Ghost of Tsushima is a new new on new title. Mm -hmm. It's also gained respect with Japan and also has been it has an impact UK audience yep. and has an impact the North American audience stuff like that. So that, that's the reason why it's like. You're, you're competing against a well-known title against something that's brand new that's also impacted as well. Mm -hmm. I know The Last of Us, stuff like that. I don't know that many Japanese people are playing The Last of Us, you know? In that, in, in that, in that retrospect, in Final Fantasy, is like like you said, 20, over 20 years, almost the, you know, 20 years of a well-known title mm -hmm. of a game, which is recognized by everyone. You think, you think of Final Fantasy, you think of 7. Mm -hmm. So Japanese fans love 7. American fans love Seven. It's a world, you know, it's a big, big title. People love sequels. People love sequels. Yeah. Well, I think we're looking at Seven and with uh, rose, uh, rose tinted glasses. Oh, yeah, because, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> because, look, but it was a good game, but it's only one third of the whole entire yes, that game. Yes, that is the thing. It's so, one, one third of the, fir one third of the first disc. <laughs> yeah. One third of the first disc. I, 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 I want to. The bias in me wants to say that. Mm -hmm. But you can't give me one third of a full game that I've played already yeah. and say, this is better than all of the other ones that are completed games. Right. Yeah. No shade. That's, that's a good point. But it's not And dark. that was one of the biggest controversies when they mentioned that it was going to be the Midgar part. And a lot of fans hated it once you found out the ending of the game and the direction that they were going to. Mm -hmm. A lot of fans hated it. Some fans loved it because it was like, hey, they're gonna do something different. But some fans were like, no, I need to have my own nostalgia. No, I need to have my nostalgia. I gotta have it. Just go play you the know? other Final yes. Fantasy, just bro. Like, just, if I tell people, if you want to play a Final Fantasy and you have your nostalgia, play the original. But if you want to experience change, go play something, play, you know, play the new one. Mm -hmm. You know, so could we be on the same? Well, I'm I'm pretty sure we're on the same page mm -hmm. that we can't give Final Fantasy seven game of the year because it is one third or whatever the fuck. No, yeah, right. of yeah, a right. game. I mean, game. I mean, good no good game, but just you know, there's and, a lot of things. There's, there's, a lot there's, of things there's, there's a lot of things wrong with it that I think reviewers wouldn't want to give to it, especially mm -hmm. especially the graphics too. Like, can we talk about how one moment? The game will look completely beautiful, and the next moment you'll go, and the textures on the walls and the ground, and everything looks yeah. completely trash. The pop it's trying to form like pop and stuff. It's still trying to form. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I guess the, the best way to describe that is, y'all know how y'all play like Grand Theft Auto. And mm -hmm. you'll, you'll be driving through the city like real fast, and the poppins will still be coming in on buildings because yeah. the game yeah. trying to keep up with loading the mm -hmm. data. Right. That's basically what it looked like, except the data never loaded in for yes. the for the, yeah. the environments. And, 
And also the thing against it is it's a story that's been told over 20 years. Right. We all know the story. Yeah. We all know what happens. And if you're looking for game of the year, you want a story that you ever seen before, never heard before. But if story is a thing, Animal Crossing doesn't really have a story. You're just building an island. Yeah. You know, yeah. Hades, I guess, I don't know the story in that one, but I know Last of Us. It's is, a pretty good story. It's, it's and then, you know, Ghost of Tsushima has a good story from what I've been told. And Doom Eternal, just, you're just Doom, shooting up shit. Well, there is a story with Doom. There's a story, I mean, it's, it's not just not huge. huge. It's not huge. So if that's the retrospect of we doing stories, then it's probably going to be either Ghost of Tsushima or Last of Us 2. Because if you're doing story driven, those two stories, from what I've been told, I haven't played the games, mm-hmm. or either one, but as far as stories, those two are top notch. So if you're doing best direction or even the bad game of the year, those two deserve it. Even though I say Animal Crossing earlier because of the pandemic, but still, those two games will probably end up getting game of the year. Well, I mean, let me let me, let me give you an example about how games are going to usually go for the game of the year. Like usually, games that win the game of the year are gonna be like story driven, yeah. great gameplay, mo- mostly single player experiences. Uh, if you remember back in 2016. Uh, the the game that everybody was just going crazy over was Overwatch. Mm-hmm. O- Overwatch uh-huh. took ev- took the world by storm. Everybody was playing it. You couldn't you couldn't get away from it. True, true. And everybody was hyping up Overwatch going into that year's Game of the Year awards to win. And th- they were going to sweep multiplayer and Game of the Year and all sorts of stuff like that. And guess what? Actually, won Game of the Year, Uncharted Four from Naughty Dog. Yes, there, yeah. So yeah. when you when you go ahead and, and and look at that, it's not always you know what I guess for the reviewers the reviewers aren't going to look at it as like okay what game it was like just one of those games that just took everything by storm I mean the, the, the same thing happened in 2018 with Red Dead Redemption 2 and God of War God of War ended like, up winning the hype, the hype behind Red Dead Redemption 2 was just disgusting it was ridiculous everybody mm-hmm. was hyping this game up to the high heavens and then game of the year is God of War, and people are like, okay, you know, it, you know, if you have a game that's good enough, if the story's good enough, if the yeah. characters are great, if the gameplay is tight, then if it's the overall good package, then I feel like to the reviewers, they're gonna take that over a game that does, it's, it's like this, they're gonna take a game that does a lot of things decently, checks a lot of, bo- checks they a lot check, of boxes, they check a lot of boxes, then a game that checks one box off really well, but it kind of falls around everything else. Yeah, that's what the other categories are for. And yes. that's, what, that's what the other categories are for. So all these other games are in the Game of the, game of the Year award, I guarantee you they will win one award and some other category. Yeah, I'm, I'm but, actually looking at like, you know, the older, yeah. no, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'm looking at the older like Game of the Year like nominations and whatnot. Name off. Um, 2004, Dragon Age Inquisition won. Okay. It beat Bayonetta 2, Dark Souls 2, Hearthstone, and Middle oh. Earth. 2015, Bayonetta. which are three. It beat Bloodborne, oh. Fallout 4, Metal Gear Solid 5, Super Mario Maker. 2016, Overwatch 1. It beat Doom, Inside, Titanfall, and Uncharted 4. 2017, Breath of the Wild 1. It beat it's fucking Breath of the Wild. Well, well, well over, uh, Overwatch 1 in terms of, I, th- I think it won... Uh, I think it's like gameplay and like characters and things well, like well, that. Well, it won, it won Game of the Year at the Game Awards, mm-hmm. but overall... Yeah, uh, Uncharted Four. It Uncharted Four, yeah. Uncharted Four, Wonderful. 2017, you get Breath of the Wild. It beat Horizon Zero Dawn, Persona Five, Pub, PUBG, and Mario Odyssey. Mm-hmm. And we mentioned God of War that beat Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Celeste, Marvel Spider-Man, Red Dead, and Monster Hunter. And then last year, it was Sekiro that was nominated and won. And then it, could, it lost. It beat Control, Death Stranding, which to me, Death Stranding had one of the best stories ever in recent. You know what's crazy? Death Stranding ended up winning overall 2019. Yeah, it did. It did. On it. it did. It did. I thought it was funny. And then Resident Evil remake, Resident Evil remake, Smash, and then Outer Worlds. And now so, we've got these games coming out. And it, to me, anybody can win. Right. Any person can win. It because we don't know what they're like. They said you, they're checking out a lot of boxes. Right. And from what y'all have been saying, Ghost of Tsushima checks a lot of boxes. Last of Us checks a lot of boxes. Even Animal Crossing checks a lot of boxes. Doom, I don't think checks a lot of boxes. Mm. I mean, graphically and like designs and stuff, they're great. You're just swinging so, around a sword. Yeah. At that point. But, well, Final Fantasy VII, right. you know, it's a nostalgia kit, and that's going to check the nostalgia box. All right. Let's, let's go around the table here. Who do you think is going to win, and who do you want to win? Starting with you, PD. All right. Who I think, who I want to win. Who do you want to win? I honestly want Final Fantasy VII to win because during the quarantine, it was one of the games I played the most. I had the most story, and being a, RPG, a JRPG fan, I'm going to stick with it. Um... I love the gameplay. The music. The music was one of the best things that caught me because you basically had a new uh, 
Masashi Hamazawa. He actually did the music for um, Dirge of Cerberus. He also did the music, some of the music for Ten. That battle theme is Hype Wars. Yes. He also, did, he also was the main person who did the music for the 13 trilogy. Okay. But he took some of Nobumatsu's tracks and remixed them in a way and made them somewhat a little better than Nobumatsu did. Mm. And Nobumatsu actually gave him praise. So as far as the music and stuff, I want Final Fantasy VII to win. But I think that Ghost of Tsushima is going to do it this year. I think Ghost of Tsushima is, is going to win. I... Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you guys. Um, I'm going to go a couple angles with you guys real quick. Mm-hmm. All right, so first off, it's game of the year, right? The title, the title speaks for itself, game. It's, it's all about the game, right? Mm-hmm. With, with Nintendo bringing out Animal Crossing, it was a crutch during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. On top of that, you've also got something brand new on the shelf, Ghost of Tsushima that was out. Okay. You got Last of Us that was also anticipated. Doom, whatever you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever Doom, Doom, sorry, Doom, Doom, whatever. I was like, can we really yeah. talk about Doom like that? I don't think it's on anybody. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> so whatever you guys is. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm just going to go ahead and let you guys know that I feel like as a company, mm-hmm. Nintendo and PlayStation has won as a game company of the year yeah. mm-hmm. because of what they fucking did. Look at the PlayStation. That's four exclusive games. On the game of the year chart, yeah. right? Nintendo dropped a fucking bomb with selling out Switches and selling Animal Crossing. Twenty-two million sold. Twenty-two million yeah. sold. Mm-hmm. That's current day. Current mm-hmm. day. Now, here's my here's my personal choice. All right, I don't have a dog in a race when it comes to Ghost of Tsushima because I haven't played it, or Last of Us. However, I did watch a couple of gameplays and I did sit there and see what was done. I was actually hyped about Ghost of Tsushima, but I was skeptical by buying something exclusively new. Although, although PlayStation has a good track record of new release titles, so is Nintendo sometimes. Mm. Sometimes, you know? Yeah. But PlayStation killed it this fucking year with new yeah. exclusive titles. Mm. Like, what the hell? They had Zero Horizon Dawn, brand yeah. new. Hit. You know? What was that else? Uh, Death Stranding? Hit. Yeah, yeah it, it's but wobbly, you know, it, it, it's it, wobbly, but it was wobbly. But you know, if if you if you're used to a Metal Gear Solid mechanics and you're willing to sit your ass down and pay attention to the story, and, like, if, it's if, a hit. and if you understand Kojima, then it's a yes. hit for you. Yes, it's to me, it's a work of art. So it was a hit on on my behalf, you know. But look at that Ghost of Shima. So Shima, I say, I it's one of those things that I felt like I felt like with Spider Man. Why did not buy that shit day one? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. because it was excellent. Mm. Ghost of Tsushima is probably going to be one of those games that I'm going to end up playing when it hits good game of the year. I'm probably going to say, you know what, I fucking need to buy it. Actually, I think you it's know? on sale right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, most, most, I think uh, most of the nominees are on it's sale. Going straight, sure it's Makes going sense. straight to the PlayStation 5, for real. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but here's, my, here's my opinion. Personally, I want Ghost of Tsushima to run because mm-hmm. artistically, how much time they spend on it, mm-hmm. the, way this, the way that it's the theme, I'm all about art in these games. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. a work of art, you know? Animal Crossing, I did spend some hours in that fucking game. I did. I was Who guilty didn't? of it. I didn't. And <laughs> um, because I was on Discord, everyone was playing Animal Crossing. Yeah. We were trading shit like crazy. Right. And um, I mean, the way that they've done, then done, done that game on past Animal Crossing games. I mean, honestly, it's like this one has 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 now let you fuck with an island of your own, yeah. and it's gotten people on a fucking craze, almost like Pokemon Go status right now. True. Um, honestly, and it, 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 it lives up to what the damn actual category is called. Game yeah. of the year. Honestly, I think that's going to be game of the year. Only, if, But when I, but my personal feeling is I want Ghost of Tsushima to be the game of the year. Right. Oh, wow. All I, right. I, I mean, Ooh, I, I can't argue. I not. cannot argue with that when you put it out like that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I still think that Ghost of Tsushima is going to win. Because of everything that you just said, it's art. I know that games didn't start as art, but like things like that, things like Ghost of Tsushima, make you appreciate the hard work and dedication that people put into video games, which is like God of War winning the game of the year. That was just straight cinematic art. Even when you're playing the game, you felt like you were a part of a world, part of the world. The hits, the enemies, like it, it, it was never boring. Ghost of Tsushima is never boring. It can, it, you, you can pause, go back from it, pull back from it, but 
dude, you could just sit in the landscape and watch the wind blow. Damn. You could play a flute walking up to the next person you're going to kill. Like, come on. <laughs> if you wanted to stand, if you wanted to stand there and watch the uh, soccer pella, uh, soccer pedals fly by you and play it and play a flute, that that's scenery right there to you, yeah. to everybody. Somebody can sit there and just get touched emotionally by right. it. It's it's not about the killing. It can be, which is why you have the ninja the ninja part. But like, you can take moments where you just. Let me just take in the scenery and then I'll turn the game off mm. and then go do something. Let me let this game calm me down and then I can walk away and do the rest of my day. Mm-hmm. That's why I think Tsushima is going to win. No, no, that's why I want it to win. Okay. I think Last of Us 2 is going to win because of the controversy around it and we're in the era of... I don't want to sound mean, but like you can see agenda. We're in the agenda era mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, uh, that's fair. That's a fair statement. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't care if a transgender character is in my game. I that that part doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, it's just you could see with the reaction that the game developer had with the community what was going on. You sat down with somebody who's jaded by one perspective and then base the game off of that. It has great moments. I've seen gameplay, I, I've watched cutscenes. It looks great. But people have made it into something that it probably never was supposed to be. Mm. Because you're trying to reach an audience that is, prob- is still there. It could have been just like Samus. Like at the end of, the, at the end of um, Metroid, when you found out that Samus was a girl, None of the rest of the crap, none of that mattered. Because you went through an experience with the character only to find out the gender is done. Now, Samus is a huge, one of the hugest characters in gaming. Mm-hmm. So that's why, that's why. I'm going to stop, stop right now. I, just have, I don't know why I don't <laughs> no, want to You're good, man. You're good. But yeah, go ahead, man. You go ahead, man. All right, well, for me, I'm going to go with... I'm a Final Fantasy VII fanboy, and <laughs> being one that I haven't played any of these nominees, <laughs> I'm going to go for who I want to win, honestly. I, from judging what, what I've seen, I want to go to Tsushima to win. Man. Mm-hmm. And that is a game that looks like pure art. Right. That's a game that if someone asks, why, why, why are video games so special? Why, what's so special about video games? You could probably present that person with go to Tsushima and be like, Play this, and you'll understand. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I think the fanboys gonna be mad, man. Last of Us Two. <laughs> y'all, 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 butts are clenching right now. Clenching right now. Y'all, I can feel the heat right now. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Go ahead, Daniel. Give us your thoughts, man. Um, here we go. So, what? Okay, so the game that I want to win, obviously, is Last of Us Part Two. What I think is gonna win. Is last was part two. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, I mean, there's, I mean, like, I'm, I'm, I'm already a spouse upon it already, but uh-huh. I mean, you're, 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 you're talking about a game that takes you on such a overall emotional journey, and just with the gameplay and the characters, and the story, and everything else that goes there. Like, I feel like when you compare it to any other game that's on this list, it is far and away beyond anything that's out there, even Ghost of Tsushima, which, like I said before, if Ghost of Tsushima had came out in any other year, it probably would have won Game of the Year. It's not going to win Game of the Year because it came out a month after The Last of Us Part Two. Right. To go back to what, what you were saying in terms of the controversy, I don't, I don't feel that way. I don't mm. feel that... Because it's, it's, it's like this, right? Everybody has their own opinions about uh, where the where society is headed to. Yeah. You know, whether, you know, and you got people fighting about, oh, you're a conservative, oh, you're a liberal, or oh, whatever, it's like that. I, I feel like what happened is, it, I don't feel like they, they took the game and they saw the backlash because of their revelation that 
Ellie was was was, was gay in a in an earlier game, mm. and then they jumped on it. I don't feel like they did that. I feel like they established that in the DLC right after Last of Us Part One, mm. and then they just expanded upon it as naturally as they could possibly do that with with uh, a lesbian mm. and post apocalyptic America. Yeah. So. I feel like when you combine that with how the story ended up going, a lot of people didn't like that because let's be real, your your average gamer is 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 a white male between the ages of twenty five to forty five or something else like that, right? Sure. So when you have a game that doesn't particularly um, have anything that you can connect to outside of maybe the main character from the first game, right? Which I'm not gonna spoil the game, but then <laughs> something <laughs> happens to that character. Uh, so you know, I can I can I can understand why they reacted that way. Mm-hmm. I don't agree with the way the reason why they acted that way because if you get to the point where you're now sending death threats and you're harassing people online and you're doing all of this to because you're that upset about the game, yeah. then if I was Neil Druckmann and them wrote the story, I'd be clapping myself on the damn back because it I was able. To, it made you feel something because I was able to write a story that has that much reaction to it, and then y'all still went out and bought the game like. Uh, I, th- I think out of all the games that came out, I think The Last of Us Part Two sold the most out of all of the Sony's exclusives this year. Uh, so no, Ghost, Ghost no. was the Final Fantasy. No, 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 no. Ghost, Ghost was the the highest let rating me, original let IP me make, that came out from. Let me make sure. I mean, you, I mean, you can go and make sure. I, I, I can tell you right no, now. No, I'm just, I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. me. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but check the clock, check the clock backs. Right. But yeah, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. Ghost of Tsushima ended up being Sony's highest selling original IP. Because before it ended end up being You're Spider-Man, right. and ended up being Spider-Man beforehand, but in terms of its top-selling title so far this year, it's Last of Us Part Two. So, right. so you have a game that sold well, it's a critical hit, it's one of the highest-rated games of the year. You have a game that has been nominated, like literally, if you go through the whole entire Game Awards in terms of the nominations, as the, the game's nominated one of the most out of all the the, the thing, mm-hmm. and you 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 go through all of that, and it's just like. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna go here and say it's like it's the greatest game of all time. You know, obviously some people are gonna have issues. There's some issues I had with the game too, uh, just for certain things that they were doing story wise and everything. But overall, me personally, just looking at that and comparing it to the rest of the games on that list, there's only one game I would have said that would have had a chance, which would have been Ghost of Tsushima or Cyberpunk. Had Cyberpunk come out, had, <laughs> had but now they pushed that back, so now. I feel like that just opened the door pretty much for Ghost of uh, for, uh, Last of Us Part Two to come in and sweep, and I feel like it's gonna sweep. Right. It's gonna do big numbers, so that's if, my choice. If, if they were playing this shit in Vegas, odds would be heavily favored for Last of Us. It really, yeah. it, 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 it really would. Like that's because that's that's pretty much the consensus right now. Like as soon as Cyberpunk, as soon as CD Projekt Red said the Cyberpunk got yeah. delayed. The, everybody was like, okay, well, last of part two is going to win this. It would so. literally be like the Patriots being undefeated against the Giants. That's, that was kind of odd. 18-1. Yeah, 18-1. 18 but yeah. with that, let's just uh, we'll head up the next topic, man. For all audience out there, let us know what you think. Who's going to win it? Who you think is going to come out on top? And, uh, I mean, the last of us, too, if they fail, you know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of fanboys are going to celebrate. So sad. There's gonna be a lot of champagne. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anything <laughs> anything can happen in the game of wars. Anything sure. can happen. But if they win, there's gonna be a lot of hurt butts out there. Right. No matter who wins, it's gonna be a ton of conspiracies. Oh, they rigged the thing. <laughs> oh, oh, I want to recount. Oh, oh, I want to recount. It's oh, Captain oh, Kennedy's shit. fault. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, real quick, guys, uh, 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 let the uh, let the viewers know what day that uh, the game of wars will be on. December 10th. December 10th, the Game Awards hosted by Jeff Keighley. Free plug. All right, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's the time. Like and comment, just like if you ain't feeling the content. Download the discussion from SoundCloud. Big shout out to you for being a part of the crowd. Follow us on every popular social media on the platform in the description below. Also, don't forget to check out our Patreon and check us out on Streamlabs. Hit that like button. Y'all know you like the content. Peace, peace. Out.